Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to check out the inner workings of the task system in Battle Royale Tycoon. Let's begin. So, in the game, most actions are set up as tasks. Like in here, when the arena ends, multiple tasks are created that say, for example, this area needs to be cleaned. Then these workers ask the task system for a new task and execute it. The system supports multiple task types, so for an arena cleanup task, the worker goes to a target position, executes an animation, and cleans up the floor. For the item cleanup task, the worker goes to a used item, grabs the item, and takes it to the item slot, and finally drops it. This whole thing is a good example of the task system in action. The game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wishlist, and follow. So, to start off, I have an empty class in here named CM Task System. I'm simply using the CM prefix to avoid naming conflicts since I'm doing this in the game's actual codebase. So, let's begin by creating the basic structure of the task system. So, inside our task system class, let's make a subclass called task, public class task. This subclass is what will contain the information related to the task. For now, let's just leave it as empty. So let's make the task system constructor. And when we construct the task system, we need to initialize a list of tasks. So a private list of tasks, call it task list. And we're going to initialize this in here. Okay, now we need a function to request the next task. So let's make a public task request next task. So this function is called by a worker, so worker requesting a task. And in here, we're simply going to check if task list.count, if it is bigger than zero, then it means we have a task. So let's simply return the first task on the task list. So return task list of zero. If we do not have any task, then no tasks are available. And we're simply going to return null. So in here, before we return the first task, we need to also remove it from the list. Essentially, when we return the task, we assume that whoever asked for it will execute it. So in here, let's store a task reference for the task list of zero. Then we go into the task list and remove at the position zero. And then finally, we return the task. So in here, give worker the first task. All right, so we now have the function to request a task. Now let's add another function for adding a task. So a public void add task. And in here, we're going to receive a task object as an argument. And we're simply going to add it to our task list. All right, so the basic task system is now set. We can add and request tasks. So now let's go into the game handler, which is simply a script executing on start. In here, let's first create a new task system, call it task system, new task system. Now let's do some testing to make sure everything is working perfectly. So first, we're going to do a debug.log of the task system dot request next task. So this should return null, since for starters, the task system doesn't have any tasks. Then we're going to add a new task. So create a task system dot task task equals new task and we're going to go into the task system and add this task then finally we're going to do another debug.log which should return this task and then finally do another one which should return null so this one should print null this should print the task and this one should print null all right let's make sure all of this is correct all right, as you can see in the log, everything is correct. First one returned null since we had no tasks. Then we add the new task and correctly grabbed it. And finally, the task system returned null since there are no more tasks. Okay, so now let's make the worker. So let's make a new C -sharp script and I'm going to name it CM worker task AI. Okay, so now inside, let's first make a setup function. So public void setup. And we need this function so we can pass in the worker object. The worker object is of type CMI worker worker. So let's store this internally. This worker object implements this interface in here, which contains all the functions we need for our task system. 
Right now, all we need is the move function in here, which moves the worker towards a target position and triggers an action when he arrives there. Okay, so now on the worker task, let's start off by making some basic states. So up here, make a private enum called state. And for the possible states, we can be waiting for next task or executing task. And let's store a state for our state. And for starters, we're going to start off as waiting for next task. So in here, let's make a private void update. And on the update, we're going to do a switch on our state. In case we are waiting for the next task, in here, let's just wait for a timer. So we're going to go up here and make a private float waiting timer. And in here, we're going to reduce the waiting timer by time dot dot time. And if the timer is under zero, then we are going to request a new task. So request next task. Let's make that function down here, private void request next task. And in here, once we request the next task, then set the waiting timer back to a certain amount. So let's make up here a float waiting timer max and let's say 0.2 out. So he's gonna try to grab a new task every 200 milliseconds. Okay, so the only purpose for this state is for the worker to wait a bit before asking for next task, since it doesn't make sense to ask for a new task every single update. So in here he is waiting to request a new task. So when we request the next task, just to make sure that this function is being called, let's spawn a pop-up in here. Now in order to spawn a pop-up, I'm going to use the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So I'm going to go in there and spawn a text pop-up on the mouse position and just say request next task. Okay, this is just so we can visually see when this function is called. All right, so now that the worker task AI is set up, let's go back in the game handler. And in here, we want to spawn a new worker. So we can remove all of this for now, leave the task system initialized, and let's spawn a new worker. Okay, so in here I am creating a new worker object which handles the visual and movement of the worker. I'm adding the worker task AI to that worker and then finally setting it up with this worker object. All right, so let's test and see if our worker is visible. Yep, there's the worker and as you can see, he is requesting a new task every 200 milliseconds. So now that we have the worker periodically requesting for a task, let's add the ability to execute a given task. So let's go into our task system in here on our task, which is currently empty. We're going to add a field in here, a public vector three and call it target position. So essentially the goal of this task is for the worker to go to a certain position. This task object is meant to contain all the information that the worker needs to complete the task, which in this case means he only needs the target position. So that's the task object. Now on the worker, so in here, when we are requesting a next task, we have to ask the task system. So on our setup, after we receive the worker, let's also receive a task system. And we're going to store it in here. And on request next task, we are going to go into the task system and request the next task. We're going to store the task system dot task. Task will be stored in here. So now in here, we need to handle that task. So if the task that was returned is null, that means the task system currently has no tasks available. So we should wait and request again later. So in here, let's set the state to our state dot waiting for next task and do nothing else. So 200 milliseconds later, he's gonna ask for another task. When he asks again, if he does get a task, let's make a function to execute the task. Execute task and we're going to give it the task. So let's go down here, make a private void, execute task, and we're going to receive a task system dot task as an argument. So in here, let's start off by making a pop-up and say execute task. And for this task, all we want is to move the worker to a specific position. 
and that position is stored in here in the task object. So I'm going to go into the worker object, which has the move to function that we saw previously, and we're going to move him towards the task.target position. Now when he gets there, he's going to execute this action in here, and the action will simply be reset the state back to waiting for the next task. And up here on our switch, case we are state dot executing the task, then we are simply going to do nothing. All right, so as you can see on the setup, we are receiving the task system and storing it internally. We are requesting a new task every 200 milliseconds. When we request a task, we ask the task system for the task. If he returns a null task, that means there is no task available. So we keep the state waiting for the next task and we wait 200 milliseconds before asking again. If he does receive something, then we're going to execute that task. In this case, our task is simply to move him towards a target position. So the worker moves towards that target position. When he gets there, he executes this action, which puts him back again, waiting for the next task. So all we need is in here state equal state dot executing the task, just to make sure that when he's executing, he's not waiting. Okay, so that's the worker task AI. Now let's go in our game handler. And first on the setup, let's give it the task system as well. And now in here, let's add a task after some time. So I'm going to use the function timer, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities. It simply executes an action after some time. So I'm going to create, and in here it will trigger this action. And the action we want is to spawn a new task. So let's go into the task system dot add a new task. And now the task that we want, let's create that task in here. And it will simply be a new task, which has a target position of, let's say 550, 550. And then we add that task to the task system. And let's do a CMD bug dot text popup just to say task added. And we're going to execute this after five seconds. Okay, so essentially the worker should be requesting a task and five seconds later, a task will be added. He will grab that task, execute that task and move towards this position. So let's see if it's working perfectly. All right, there's the worker. He's requesting tasks and getting nothing. And now suddenly a task was added. He's executing, he goes there. And now again, he's requesting new tasks. All right, great. Exactly the behavior that we want. Okay, so now let's go in our game handler in here and simply add tasks on mouse click. So I'm going to go up here, make a private void update inside if input dot get mouse button down of mouse button zero, which is the left mouse button. So if we press the left mouse button, let's spawn a task to send them to move towards the mouse position. So I'm going to go into the utils class and get the mouse world position. And let's comment this out and like that. All right, so every time we click, we should spawn a new task and then the worker will move towards the mouse position. All right, there's the worker. He is constantly requesting for a new task. And now if I go up here and I click, it will add a task and he should move there. Click and yep, he grabbed the task. Now he's going there. And again, he's requesting, click, he goes, he waits and requests. Okay, great. I can also click multiple times, which will queue up the task. So let's say you go here, then go here and here. And he goes, executes that one, requests another, executes, stops, requests, executes, and here stops and constantly requests. Okay, great. All right, so now the way we set up the task system allows multiple workers with no extra effort. So let's go in our game handler in here and spawn another worker. All right, so as you can see, I have two workers in here. Both of them are waiting for a task. And when I click, I spawn a task. This one got the task, he moved there, and now he's waiting again. The other one is still waiting. I can spawn two tasks, that one grabs, now go, and that one grabs, and they both execute the tasks sequentially. So I can click multiple times, and as you can see, they get executed sequentially. A worker grabs the task from the task system and executes it. So there you have it. We created a task system where we can add tasks and the workers periodically request the task and execute it if available. In the next video, we're going to cover multiple task types. Again, the game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the scene page, add it to your wishlist and follow. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. 
If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.